I got a brand new MacBook Pro that is going to be replacing my 2013 Mac Pro. Now that computer has been a workhorse and has been reliable ever since I got it. But it's at the point now where, you know, I'm shooting video with this uh, Sony a7S III and those video files are humongous and really hard for the Mac Pro to deal with. So throughout the years, I'll do a project and I put a little money aside and I knew that these MacBook Pros were gonna come out and there's a ton of people that are talking about all the specs and how wonderful it is and everything. Well, we're gonna take a look at the MacBook Pro M1 Max through the eyes of an animator. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Carlos and in this video, we're gonna take a look at how this M1 Max MacBook Pro has made my video editing process just a little more efficient. First, let's take a look at some of these terms that all of these people continue to use that really kind of kind of confuse us. If we take a look at a computer as a library, kids, the library is basically a paper-based internet. Back in the day when libraries were hot, you would go to the library, check out a book, go through the little card catalog and make sure that the book was there. Now we have the internet, so the libraries are becoming almost almost like a unicorn. If you see one, you get excited and then you and then you just keep on pushing. They're very helpful, especially when you're trying to describe computers. So if we're taking a look at our computers as if they were libraries, we can describe our hard drive space as how many books we can keep in our library, or in computer speak, how many applications, how many files, whether they're videos, audio, all those files, all of those things, they equate to books and how many books or how many apps you can have, how many files you can have on your computer. RAM is basically how many of these books you can read at the same time and how efficient it is to read all of those books at the same time. Now let's talk about CPU or central processing unit. Let's get away from the analogy of library and now let's take a look at maybe if we're making a film or an animation, right? CPU would be the director. They take a task, they hand it off, and then when that task is completed, it's handed back to the director and the director knows exactly what to do next. When those tasks are being handed off by a director, those are going to different teams, whether it's an animation, special effects, storyboarding, whatever it is. If we take that handoff process and put it into a computer, we're saying that the CPU is taking tasks and handing them off to the GPU. The GPU is called graphics processing unit. The GPU is able to then do all of this processing and then when it's done, it takes the result and hands it back to the director or computer speak, back to the CPU. So that's the relationship between CPU, GPU. CPU would be the director, the GPU would be all of the other teams that help support the director. The very next thing you hear when you're watching all of these YouTube videos about the MacBook Pros and the processors and everything, the next term you might hear is cores. How many cores does your computer have? With the M1 Pro processor, you get up to 10 cores of CPU. So basically what that means is instead of just one director, you get 10 directors. And imagine having 10 directors that are super efficient and know how to work together. And not for anything, but that is also a unicorn. Then when it comes to the GPU, you get 16 cores of GPU. And as far as RAM, you can go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now the M1 Max has 10 core CPU, so you get 10 directors right off the bat, there's no up to or anything. You get 10 cores. You also get up to 32 core GPU. So imagine having 10 directors and 32 animation teams, 32 special effects teams, 32 storyboarding teams, whatever team it is that you want. You get 32 of those individually. So now you have 10 directors telling 32 teams what to do. That's what creates efficiency. Now this is where RAM becomes very important. Usually in my process, I might have Photoshop open, I would have Premiere open, I would have Audition open, I would have After Effects open, I might have Blender open, I might have a browser open, I might be listening to music, 
all of those things that go into your process of creativity, all of those things, basically the more RAM you have, the more of that you can continue to do and your computer's not going to get crushed. So to give you a good picture of what cores are, here is an example of what a single core computer would look like. And this is what a multi-core computer would look like. So to wrap that all up, the more cores you have, whether they're CPU and or GPU, the more efficient your process should be. And with all that said, basically what Apple has done is it's given all of these software companies enough rope to hang themselves. So you have an incredibly powerful computer. Everyone is talking about this is the most powerful laptop ever created and all that stuff. Well, uh, I just opened up my laptop over the weekend and I tried to create a new Photoshop file and it literally took a solid five seconds for Photoshop to create a PSD file that I was able to draw in. So what we're hoping is that Adobe and all these other companies start to build for the M1 processor and making everything a little more efficient, a little more stable. If you have a Creative Cloud membership, you know what I'm talking about. Stability, stability. Okay, so now that we talked about the inside of the computer, let's talk about the outside of the computer. Everyone is talking about how Apple has put ports back into the MacBook Pro. I understand what Apple has been trying to do, making everything a little thinner, a little lighter, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about power. I need something that is going to help me edit videos. I've been trying a bunch of different devices to see how I can actually stay on the move because on this channel, we're living our life and then we're coming together and telling our own stories and even learning how to do those things. So I need a computer that's powerful, but yet easy to take with me wherever I go. I don't want to have to pull out a pile of cables that looks like a pet octopus just to do some editing. So these ports are very important. On the new MacBook Pros, we get three Thunderbolt 4 ports and a card reader. The SD card reader comes in handy when you're taking a lot of photos and videos with a regular SD card. But since I'm shooting on an A7S III, I need this card reader because this has the opening for a CF Express card and the CF Express card doesn't fit into this memory card slot. So I'm gonna be carrying this Anyway, so that's kind of helpful, I guess, if I shoot on a regular memory card, but it doesn't really help me, but it's nice to know that it's there. Now I want to talk about my current video process with the Mac Pro. First, I have to obviously go out and shoot the videos, and then I have to transfer the videos to my computer. Then I bring those videos into Premiere. Then I have to create proxy files. And the reason I have to create proxy files is because, again, these video files are too big for the Mac Pro and so it starts to choke and hiccup. Sometimes you hit the space bar and it might take a second or two for the video to start playing in Premiere Pro. And this is not just a Premiere Pro thing. This is for pretty much everything. If your video files are too big and bulky for your computer, that's a computer problem, not necessarily software problem. Not letting software developers off the hook though, sometimes it does make a difference Premiere Pro sometimes chokes, and from what I understand, DaVinci Resolve handles it just a little bit better. So I don't know, but we will be taking a look at DaVinci Resolve in the future. So after I create my proxies, I then edit the videos. You have to remember when you're editing in Premiere Pro, even if you have your proxy files laid out, if you start doing color correcting, Premiere will automatically turn those proxy files back into the high resolution files. So if you're doing color correcting, editing and everything, and you're trying to figure out why your proxy files are skipping or, or having dropped frames and stuff, chances are Premiere swapped out your proxy for the high resolution files. So just be aware of that. And then when you're done with your edit, you can then export your video. And that is yet again, another reason why having multiple cores for a CPU and a GPU comes in handy because if you have a lot of effects and you start stacking things like LUTs or lookup tables, if you start stacking all those things up in Premiere, all of those things affect how long it's going to take Premiere and your computer to render out these files. From what I understand with these MacBook Pros, we might not necessarily have to create proxy files anymore. Okay, quick interruption. I wanted to show you guys 
This is what I've been working on. This is the video that we're all watching together, right? I wanted to show you guys, I did not create any proxies or any anything. And now I the playback. Talk about the current video process with the Mac Pro. See what I mean? So it, even over here where it has the playback resolution, I have it set to half because I'm not trying to get crazy, but I can go ahead and click and go to full. And even still, I'm able to come over here. On an A7S III. And you see, if, Shoot on a red. if you have worked in video editing at all on a subpar machine and you see this, you know the excitement that I'm feeling right now. Give it a memory card, but it doesn't really help. This me. is full resolution. It's nice to know that it's there. Full resolution, Sony A7S III footage. I don't have any LUTs or anything put on this, not yet, but still, I honestly don't think that it's gonna make that big of a difference. Exciting times are here, folks. Now let's talk about some of the other things that come with this MacBook Pro. For example, MagSafe. I don't know if you guys have ever had a computer with the power cord that's magnetic, but that is a game changer. I loved it when Apple came out with MagSafe years ago, and I'm so happy that they brought this back. And it has nothing to do with if you trip over your cable, it unplugs itself and your laptop won't fall to the ground. That's cool. But basically for me, the highlight is when I go to plug something in, a lot like when you're trying to plug in a USB-A cable, you always put it in and it doesn't fit. So you flip it and it doesn't really fit again. And you flip it again and that's when it fits the original way that you were trying to plug it. Doesn't that drive you crazy? Now, if you're dealing with MagSafe, now all I have to do is take the magnet and put it anywhere near the charging port and it snaps right into place. That saves a lot of time. The screen on this thing is absolutely beautiful. It says here that the screen is a Liquid Retina XDR, which stands for Extreme Dynamic Range. ProMotion is Apple's fancy way of saying these screens can move up to 120 frames a second. So again, going to animation terms, we usually animate at 12 frames a second, maybe 24 frames a second. Now imagine an animation at 120 frames a second. It's gonna be incredibly smooth. The 14 inch MacBook Pro has 3024 by 1964, basically 5.9 million pixels. The 16 inch has a resolution of 3456 by 2234, and that's 7.7 .7 million pixels. Now this is one that's a little frustrating to me because I don't understand why everyone is making such a big deal out of it. These computers come with a 1080p web camera. I don't know about you, but I've seen some Logitech web cameras that come in at a whopping 4K. So there's a lot of people that are all excited about ooh, 1080p and I'm like, So the new MacBook Pros come with spatial audio built in. So you're going to need some AirPods. If you haven't tried spatial audio yet, it's, it's pretty incredible. Not going to lie. You put your headphones in and when you turn your head, the sound continues to come from that location. If you want a really good example of spatial audio, get yourself some AirPods and then go on Apple TV and check out Ted Lasso. It's a really cool representation of what you can do with spatial audio. So to wrap up this video, I got the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max with a four terabyte hard drive, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Why? Because like I said earlier, I usually have Photoshop open. Sometimes I'll have Illustrator open. Sometimes I'll have a browser window open. I'll have Premiere, I'll have Audition, I'll have After Effects. All of this stuff is open all at the same time. And if you do that on a computer that's not ready for it, you're going to crash your system. And it's it, all of that gets in the way of you getting content out. What you're trying to do is minimize the amount of waiting that you have to do when you're creating content. One of the challenges I had was connecting my Cintiq to my MacBook Pro. The video signal that was coming out of the Cintiq was mini display, and this guy doesn't really accept anything except Thunderbolt 4 or even USB-C. So what I ended up doing was opening up the back of the Cintiq, taking out the mini display cable and replacing it with this DVI to HDMI. And now the video out connection for my Cintiq is actually HDMI and not mini display. 
And if you guys want me to do a video on how I did this, I'd be more than happy to do that. And now I'm gonna be creating all of this content on the new MacBook Pro, and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a lot of the experiences, the bumps, the bruises, or lack thereof when it comes to dealing with a MacBook Pro. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to make the best decision that's right for you. Until then, I hope this video finds you healthy and I hope this video finds you safe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. I'm Carlos and in this video we're going to take a look at how the M1 Max Mac <laughs> uh, they could have named it something different